Okay, so hopefully you're watching. If you're Sophia Pichoian, she's in the room right now, awkwardly watching me do this, but maybe you're watching at home on Tuesday, hopefully teaching yourself about section 2.5, rational functions. Okay, so what I'm going to do and how this is going to work is I'm just going to run through the notes like we normally would in class um, and kind of run through some examples. And if you have any questions, make sure you email me. Come in on Saxon time on Wednesday. You can't see me right now, but I'm moving my hand right now with my voice. But you can't see it because I'm not on this video. But you will be able to see what I've done. So here we go. Rational functions, that's something we all learn in uh, Algebra 2 Honors. Um, here's a quick refresher on what that is. So for any rational function, um, that's when we have one polynomial over another. Okay, so some p of x divided by q of x. And then we just remember that q of x can't be equal to 0. Okay, mind your p's and q's. Uh, so, for example, our classic rational function is f of x equals 1 over x. Um, and then a couple things happen. As x goes to 0, uh, we know that the absolute value of f of x now will go to infinity. And we'll have an asymptote that x equals 0. As f of x goes to 0, then x is going to go to infinity. So we're going to have another asymptote of f of x equals 0. So let's kind of focus on the asymptotes here. Um, rational functions. Um, so they're kind of all about asymptotes, vertical and horizontal. So we're going to kind of investigate how we can find those things. Uh, and I know in a while we've been asking, um, what about slant asymptotes? We're finally going to address those here in section 2.5. Uh, so take a look here at asymptotes. For a rational function defined by y equals f of x and for real numbers a and b, if the absolute value of f of x is tending towards infinity, in other words, our y is getting infinitely larger. And then x equals a is a vertical asymptote. On the flip side of that, if f of x, the absolute value of f of x, approaches b as the absolute value of x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, in other words, x is getting positive all the way over to infinity, then y equals b, that's going to be your horizontal asymptote. We can talk about a bunch of different ways to find those things. I think we know how to find vertical asymptotes. Uh, you just take whatever the denominator set it equal to zero and solve. Uh, the horizontal asymptote, we might be a little goofy on what those rules actually are. So here's kind of a refresher on how to find horizontal asymptotes. So if the degree of the top, p of x, is greater than the degree of the bottom, then there is no horizontal asymptote. Um, now take a look here. If the degree of p of x is equal to q of x, in other words, if the highest degree of the top is equal to the highest degree of the bottom, then that horizontal asymptote, that's going to be at the um, ratio of the leading coefficients, okay? y is equal to a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of p of x, and b is the leading coefficient of q of x. And then our third situation, is if the degree of the top is less than the degree of the bottom, then the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Um, so this is where we kind of maybe need to refresh our memory. So oblique or slant asymptote. If the degree of p of x minus 1 is equal to q of x, so in other words, the degree of the top is exactly 1 less than the degree of the bottom, um, then the oblique asymptote is p of x divided by q. Okay. And we describe the remainder. So in other words, we have to divide q into p of x. OK, so let's take a look at how to actually graph rational functions. Um, basically, what you want to do is you want to find all your asymptotes. You want to find some intercepts that you can use this as points to graph. Um, and then you want to find if the graph intersects non-vertical asymptotes. I'll show you what that means in just a second. Um, and then if you still have a good picture, plot a few more points kind of in each area to get a good picture of what we grant looks like. Um, so let's take a look at the same thing. First example here, f of x equals 3x minus 2 over x plus 3. So I think right off the bat, we'll look for our vertical asymptote. And again, to find that, you take what's in the denominator, and you set it equal to 0, and you solve. So we do x plus 3 is equal to 0. Solve that, and we get the vertical asymptote x equals negative 3. Okay, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes. So here, 
leading, the highest degree of the top and the highest degree of the bottom are the same. Okay, 3 to the 1 and x to the 1. So what we do in that case is horizontal asymptote is at the ratio of the leading coefficients. So we're going to say the horizontal asymptote is at y equals 3 over 1, or in other words, just 2. Okay, so at y equals 3. Okay, leaving the x and y intercepts, let's get a nice picture of those. So we'll say the x intercept. Uh, we'll plug in 0 for y, and then we'll just list all for x. So we're going to say 3x minus 2 over x plus 3 is equal to 0. Now, you could have just said the top equal to 0 because the bottom just ends up multiplying by 0 and it goes away. So we'll say 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So we get the x intercept is at uh, 3x equals 2 or x equals 2 thirds. Okay, so as a coordinate point, it's going to be 2 thirds. Okay, uh, let's look at the lines. We'll plug in 0 for x, so we're going to do 3 times 0 minus 2 over 0 plus 3. So we get negative 2 thirds. So our y intercept is going to be at 0, negative 2 thirds. So one thing that we also have to check for here is to see um, if our graph intercepts any non-vertical asymptotes. So if it intercepts the horizontal or the slant asymptotes. So to do that, what we'll do is we'll just take where our non-vertical asymptotes are, plug them into our formula, our function, and we'll see if the left side equals the right. If it does, um, we'll, we'll get an intersection. So what we want to do is this. We're going to take our horizontal asymptote, which is 3, okay, and we'll set that as f of x. So we're going to say 3 is equal to 3x minus 2 divided by x plus 3. Cross multiply, we'll get 3x plus 9 is equal to 3x minus 2. So this is not going to work out because if I subtract 3x from both sides, we'll end up with 9 is equal to negative 2. That's clearly not true, so we don't have to worry about our graph crossing any non-vertical asymptotes. So I think we're ready to find the graph. Let's go up here and put everything on the graph that we need to. So go ahead and draw your vertical asymptote on there. So we're going to put ours at negative 3. And uh, go ahead and put your horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. And your imaginary notes that you follow along with, or maybe just watch the video. And this is going so well so far, but I'm sure it'll fall off the tracks. We'll find out. Uh, so now let's graph our x-intercepts and y-intercepts, which we've already found. Two-thirds comma zero. So two-thirds is about here. Let's say there's a point. And we also have uh, negative two-thirds comma zero. Sorry, zero comma negative two-thirds. See, I told you it would fall off the tracks. There's that piece. So we've got a nice picture here. I know what this looks like. There's that piece. But I need a nice picture for the other side. Um, so let's maybe do a little chart to solve that problem. And let's see. My vertical asymptote's at negative 3. Let's pick negative 5 to plug in. So x comma y. I'll take negative 5 here. If we plug that into our function, we're going to get 17 halves. Okay, so that gets us a nice point over there. Negative 5, 17 halves, let's see, is 4, 5, 6. Okay, it'll be a little bit above 8. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this piece is going to look about like this. And that's pretty much good enough for me. I just want to see that you guys are getting the shape, you have the right asymptotes, you have some nice points, your x and y intercepts, and you're seeing if your rational function is crossing your asymptotes at any place. Okay. 
Um, so let's move on. I'm not going to stop for questions. Uh, David, I know you probably have some questions, but um, you're going to have to email me. Sorry, pal. All right, here's another example. So if we do f of x is equal to x plus 3, let's move this. It's equal to x plus 3 over x minus 2 divided by x plus 1. Now, just for the sake of foiling this out, that denominator is x squared minus x minus 2. That might come in handy for us. Now, you are sometimes going to be given examples where the denominator is already factored out for you, but sometimes we might have gotten this as x squared minus x minus 2. Uh, so just be aware. Okay? It's going to be helpful to factor these things a little bit later on when we have to talk about holes. Um, so I think one thing we can see right off the bat is there's going to be two places here where our denominator could equal zero. It could equal zero at x equals two or x equals negative one. So we actually have vertical asymptotes here at x equals two and at x equals negative one. Either of those will cause my denominator to be zero, and I don't want that. Um, that horizontal asymptote here, let's take a look. Degree of the top is one, degree of the bottom is two. So degree of the top, less than the degree of bottom, so we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. And uh, let's talk about the x and y intercepts. x-intercept, if I plug in uh, uh, zero for y, I'm going to get zero equals x plus three. In other words, at x equals negative three. So my x-intercept is at negative three comma zero. My y-intercept, I'll plug in 0 for x, and we are going to get um, 0 plus 3 over 0 minus 2 times 0 plus 1. So we get 3 over negative 2. So our y-intercept is going to be at 0 comma negative 3 halves. Okay. So we need to see if this function is going to cross our non-vertical asymptotes. In other words, our horizontal asymptote. So we're going to take that y equals 0, we're going to plug it into our function, and we're going to see if this crosses at some point. And you're going to see that it does. Watch this. If I can scroll down. OK, so I'm going to take 0 equals x plus 3 over Let's just say, let's take our fact, let's take our unfactored version, x squared minus x minus 2. Now what I'm going to get there is just 0 equals x plus 3. So actually, this graph is going to cross over the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. That's a negative, sorry. Okay, so let's take all these things into account in our picture. So let's put everything on the graph. We have two vertical asymptotes, one at 2 and another one at negative 1. And again, our horizontal asymptote is going to be at y equals 0. Okay, so x intercept. So let's put that in red. That's going to be at negative 3, 0. So uh, 1, 2, 3. And that x-intercept is actually the same place as where our graph crosses the horizontal asymptote. One, two, three. Okay, so it crosses right there. And if we put our y-intercept on the graph, that's going to be at zero, negative three halves. Right about here. Okay. Um, so uh, if we test some points here, your picture ends up looking like this. Let's say I wanted to plug in, I don't know what the picture on the right side of this graph looks like. I'll plug in one point to the right of x equals 2. Okay, let's say I plugged in 3. Uh, if I did that, I'd get a point right around here. And my picture would look something like this. Okay, I'd expect a little, something a little bit more rigorous from you, but for the sake of this video, that's going to be good enough. My picture here is going to look like this. Okay, plug in some points again to get a nice picture of that. And then my picture here is going to look like this. I'm going to come down from my vertical asymptote at negative 2, but I'm going to actually cross the horizontal asymptote, and my picture is going to look like this. It's going to hug the asymptote. Let's actually fix that a little bit. So we're going to hug the asymptote here a little bit and come out like that. Okay, so there's our picture there. 
Okay, notice there's three pieces there. Now, now let's keep on going. We'll do another example here. I know you're not here in the room with me, but we'll do another one anyway. Okay, so here we've got f of x is equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 um, over x plus 1 squared. So we have multiplicity of 2 there. If we quickly factor the top, we're going to get 2x minus 1 times x plus 2. Okay, quickly factor. Um, and on the bottom, if we quickly um, uh, multiply that out, it's good to kind of have these things around. We'll have x squared minus, sorry, plus 2x. Uh, that's going to be plus 1. Uh, okay, let's talk about vertical asymptote. Um, it's only going to be at one place here. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. We're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. The degree of the top is the same as the degree of the bottom. Okay, here's the square. There's the square. So we're going to have our horizontal asymptote at the ratio of the leading coefficients, 2 over 1. So, haha, -ha, there's a vertical asymptote. Sorry, a horizontal asymptote. Oh, that joke fell flat. I'm sure it'll fall even flatter on the video. Y equals 2. Okay. Just for the sake of the time here, I'm sure you can find all this on your own. But uh, x-intercept, we have two of them. One's going to be at 1 half 0. The other one's going to be at negative 2, 0. And y-intercept, there's only one. It's at 0, comma, negative 2. Okay, so now I need to see if my graph is going to cross the horizontal asymptote. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take 2 and set it equal to my entire function. Okay, my horizontal asymptote is at y equal 2. I'll plug that in. So I'm going to set this equal to 2x squared plus 3x minus 2 over, ooh, that's an x, over x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so if I kind of cross multiply here, I'm going to get 2x squared on the left plus 4x plus 2 equals 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay. So what I'll actually end up getting here when I solve this all out is x equals negative 4. Now what that tells me is this. My graph is going to cross the horizontal axis okay, at y equals 2 when x is negative 4. So intersection with horizontal asymptote at the point negative 4, comma 2. And so make sure that also makes its way on your graph. Let's go ahead and put everything on here that we need. So, vertical asymptote, x equals negative 1. There it is. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. Boom, there it is. Okay, now my intercepts, I've got one at 1 half 0. So there's 1 half right about there, and also negative 2, 0, right there. And my y-intercept is going to be at 0, negative 2, bada bing, bada boom, there it is. Okay, I'm also going to put my intersection point with the horizontal asymptote. Again, that happens at negative 4, comma 2. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, up here, 2. We'll cross right there. Okay, so if I connect my dots, here's my nice picture. I don't cross the horizontal asymptote on the right side. But on the left side, I do. So I'm going to come up here like this, and I actually cross over the asymptote like that, and I hug it all the way to the left. And wow, what a nice little picture. So good. So good. Uh, there's another example down here at the bottom. I'm not going to do it. I want to move on with this video, and I want to leave before 6 p.m. Uh, the school ended three hours ago. So let's continue on. Okay, so this next little section is going to cover how to find um, slant asymptotes, or you might hear them called oblique asymptotes. So, finding slant or oblique asymptotes. Yeah. 
looks good. Okay, so I've got f of x equals x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x plus 1. Notice the degree of the top is exactly one more than the degree of the bottom. Uh, this is going to give me a slant asymptote. So here we go. Let's factor the top there. I'm going to factor that top real quick just so we have this on standby. Factors into x plus 2 times x plus 2. So we have a multiplicity of 2. Um, so let's uh, just go ahead and quickly find the vertical asymptote. I think that's easy enough to do. That's going to be at x equals negative 1. Okay, so next thing we want to do, do we have any horizontal asymptotes? Well, none of you are here to answer that question, so I'm going to answer it. The answer is no. The okay, degree of the top is bigger than the degree of the bottom, so there is no horizontal asymptote. But there is going to be a slant asymptote. And I find that by dividing x plus 1 into x squared plus 4x plus 4. Um, so I think since we're dividing linearly here, I'm just going to use, I'm going to use synthetic division. So we're going to divide by negative 1 here, and our coefficients are 1, 4, and 4. Uh, so if we go ahead and do this, I'll bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is minus 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times negative 1 is minus 1. Three, we end up with a remainder of one there, and we're going to ignore that. And we're going to ignore the remainder. So it turns out our slant asymptote asymptote is going to be at x plus three. Okay, that actually is the line of our slant asymptote. Actually, instead of writing at, we're going to say y equals x plus 3. And let's go ahead and quickly find the x and y intercepts. We'll get those at some nice points. Uh, the x intercept, I'll just tell you where that is, is going to be at negative 2, 0. And the y intercept, I'll tell you where that is, it's going to be at 0, comma 4. Okay, so let's go up, uh, up to our graph here and uh, just go crazy. Just put everything on there that we ever hoped and dreamed. Okay. Vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. Let's put that on there. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. And this, this thing is in my way. It's just never not going to not be in my way. No horizontal asymptote, but let's go ahead and put our slant asymptote or oblique asymptote on there at x plus 3. Um, so if we do that, we know that it has a y-intercept of 3, 1, 2, 3, and it's got a slope of 1, so very roughly right about here. And there's our slant asymptote. Um, let's go ahead and get our intercepts on there. So we have an intercept at negative 2, comma 0, so right about here. And another intercept is at 0, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, before, we wanted to see if our graph crossed um, our non-vertical asymptotes. That includes slant asymptotes. So we have to plug in x plus 3 into our function, see if we cross it anywhere along the way. Um, and it's just a little bit more involved than before. Here's what we do. We're going to say x plus 3 is equal to our whole function, x squared plus 4x plus 4 over x plus 1. Okay, I cross multiply here, and I'm going to get x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals x squared plus 4x plus 3. And when I simplify all that, I end up with just 4 is equal to 3. That's clearly not true. So we do not cross the slant asymptote. Phew, only for us. Okay, so let's just finish this up. Here's one piece of the graph, plugs the asymptotes, and here's another piece of the graph, plugs the asymptotes. Looks pretty cool. Not too bad. Any questions? No? Cool? No one's in the room right now. This is weird. Let's do another example. Um, okay, yeah, let's do this one, I guess. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, first thing I want to do is I want to notice Degree of the top, again, is exactly one more than the degree of the bottom, so I'm going to have a slant asymptote. 
let's quickly factor the top. We're going to factor that into 2x plus 1 and x plus 1. Okay, now that's there for us. We're Gucci. I'll let you guys take when I say that. Okay, we're going to have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. There is not going to be a horizontal asymptote here, but there is going to be a slant asymptote. Let's uh, synthetically divide. So we synthetically divide by 4. I've got a 2, I've got a 3, I've got a 1. Bring down the 2. 2 times 4 is 8. Uh, 3 plus 8 is 11. 11 times 4 is 44. And that's a remainder of 45. Again, we're going to ignore the remainder. Don't care about it. So our slant asymptote is at y equals 2x plus 11. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. We also have some intercepts I want to write on here. Our x-intercept is going to be at negative 1 half comma 0. And there's also going to be another one at negative 1 comma 0. Another one. And there's a y-intercept at 0. Looks like that's going to be negative 1 fourth. Okay, now I want to see if I'm going to cross my slant asymptote anywhere, so let's go ahead and plug that in uh, for f of x. We're going to say 2x plus 11 is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 over x minus 4. Cross multiply, and I'm going to get 2x squared plus 3x Sorry, brain fart, minus 44 uh, is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. Simplify this now, we get negative 44 is equal to 1. That's clearly not true, so this is not going to cross our slant asymptote. Let's go ahead and put everything we need to put on our graph. Okay, first things first. Let's put our vertical asymptote on there at x equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, this graph is going to be kind of kooky, but uh, bear with me here. Um, let's see. So if we put our slant asymptote on there, that's the line 2x plus 11. This is going to be off the graph. Sorry. Um, it is. Uh, but basically, here's kind of a rough estimate. So if we kind of put 11 up here, we're crossing at 11. That's our... Uh, uh, y-intercept, and then we've got a slope of 2, so uh, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. You're going to dream of me saying that. Okay, it kind of goes up here like this. Sorry, this is looking crazy. Okay, there's kind of a rough estimate. Now, if I go ahead and put my pieces on here, x-intercept at negative 1 half 0, let's use a different color than black, negative 1 half 0 right about there, and then negative 1 0 right about there, and y-intercept is at 0, negative 1 fourth, so right about here. So this piece is going to look like this. And this other piece is going to be all the way up here. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> but there you go. Okay, so there's finding uh, slant asymptotes. Here's another example down below. I'll pause on it for a couple seconds in case you want to copy that down. And do it on your own. Okay, moving on. Okay, so rational functions not in simplest form. So in other words, you might remember this from Algebra 2 honors, that's where we have a hole, or the other term for it, a removable discontinuity. Um, so here's what we have. f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4 over x plus 4. If I factor the top, I get x plus 4 times x plus 1 over x plus 4. Now, a hole occurs when you can cancel out a factor from the top and the bottom. 
In other words, the x plus 4s. So here's what we're looking for. Same factor on the top and bottom. We want to eliminate that factor. Even when you're not here, we want to eliminate that factor. And then we want to graph our rational function, but we want to just show that that piece has been removed. We want to kind of put a hole there. OK. So um, if we solve for this hole, it's going to be at x equals negative 4. Okay. Um, and actually, to get where that piece is, I'm going to go ahead and plug that um, into our graph, okay? into our simplified graph. Or a simplified function graph. To get that y value. It wouldn't make sense to use the original because there is technically no hole in the original. We want to look at the, the simplified version here. So if I plug negative 4 in there, we're going to get y equals negative 4 plus 1. So it's at negative 3. So the hole is at negative 4, negative 3. And our, our uh, simplified function here with that hole removed is y equals x plus 1. Which is just a lot. Okay, it's just a lot. So if I go ahead and put this on here, um, I know where that hole is. Make it clear where it is. I think we'll say one, two, three, four, one, two, three. There's my hole. And then I'm just going to graph the line. It crosses the y-axis at one, and here it is. Okay. Good enough. Go. There's the hole. So, uh, basically, again, what you're looking for is factors in the top and bottom that can cancel out. Make it clear where the hole is on the graph. And obviously, if it's not already kind of factored out, you're going to have to do that. So, take a look at this example right here. We've got x squared minus 4 divided by x squared minus 2x minus 8. If I factor this dude out, I'm going to get x plus 2 x minus 2 on the top. And on the bottom, I'm going to get x minus 4. And I'm going to get another x plus 2, another one. And so when um, I do this, we're going to see I have an x plus 2 on the top and on the bottom. So we're going to have the whole at x equals negative 2. Now, what I'm left with is this function. The simplified function here is x minus 2 over x minus 4. Okay, so now we're going to do everything based off that simplified function. So based off x minus 2 over x minus 4, I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 4. And I have a horizontal asymptote at well, the degree at the top is the same as the degree at the bottom, so I take the ratio of the leading coefficients, 1 over 1, in other words, y equals 1. I'm going to tell you where the intercepts are. The x-intercept is going to be at 2, comma 0, and the y-intercept is going to be at 0, 1 half. Okay, and I think we forgot to find the point our hole is at. Our whole, if I plug in negative 2 there, let's see, that's negative 4 over negative 6, so the whole is going to be at negative 2, comma 2, thirds. Okay, let's put everything on the graph to see what this puppy looks like. So we've got the vertical asymptote at x equals 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom, boom, boom. Horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay. X-intercept, 2, 0. Boom. And Y-intercept at 0, 1 half. Shazam. And our hole is going to be at negative 2, comma, 2 thirds. So somewhere right about, let's see, negative 2, 1, 2, and then 2 thirds. So right about, let's see, Put it right there. Okay, make it clear where that is. Uh, if we want to get a quick point over here, um, ooh, well, we have to also see if 
our graph crosses the horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So we need to test x minus 2 over x minus 4 is equal to 1. We're going to get x minus 2 is equal to x minus 4. We get negative 2 is equal to negative 4. Doesn't work. Okay, so we don't have to worry about crossing anywhere. And let's see, we'll get another quick point over here. That's at x equals 4, so if I take x equals 5, um, let's see, if I plug that in quickly, I'll get 5 minus 2 is 3, and 5 minus 4 is 1. So we'll get uh, 5 comma 3 is the point there. So here's our picture. And here's our picture. Make sure you don't go through the hole, touch it on either side. Okay, and there's holes. Fun stuff. Okay, so there's two examples of that. I think that's enough, but I'm going to pause here on this third example and the fourth one if you want to copy those down and uh, maybe you'd like to do them on your own. I'll give you a second there. You can pause the video if you need to. Okay, moving on. So, last thing in this awkward video um, is solving rational equations. So, maybe you have a love hate relationship with this from algebra 2. Uh, maybe you don't. Okay, so I'm here alleviating your fears. Rational equations. So those are rational expressions for one or more terms. Here's the way you're going to do this. You're going to solve by multiplying by the uh, least common denominator, the lowest common denominator. Um, and you want to remember this. It's not defined when the denominator is equal to zero. Uh, I just turned and faced the classroom, but there was no one here to nod at me. So hopefully you're nodding on your computers. This is a weird experience. Okay, so essentially what you want to do um, fully factor out all the terms you have. So here we have 5 over x plus 1 plus 6 over 2x plus 4 equals x plus 7 over x squared plus 3x plus 2. First thing you want to do, fully factor all your denominators. So step 1, factor denominators. So let's do that. We're going to get 5 over, well, that's just going to be an x plus 1 still, plus 6 over, we'll pull out a 2, that's x plus 2. That's going to be equal to x plus 7 over, and that guy factors into x plus 2 times x plus 1. Okay, now, we want to solve this by multiplying both sides by the lowest common denominator. So step two, identify the LCD. And essentially what you want to do is you want to take one of each factor you see with the highest degree that you see. So what we need here is this. We need a two. I see an x plus one. The max degree I see that raised to is one. So all I'm going to do is take x plus one. If I saw an x plus 1 quantity squared, then I would need to take x plus 1 squared. Uh, the AC just turned on. Hold one second so I can turn it on so you can hear. Okay, and we're back. But it paused for you, so now this sounds weird. So we've got 2, we've got x plus 1. The other factor I see, I need an x plus 2. And the highest degree I see it raised to is 1. So that's all I have to worry about. So that's going to be my LCD. I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by the LCD. Multiply both sides of the equation by the LCD. Okay, let's do it. So I'm going to take this dude here, and we're just going to multiply by, well, I'm just going to be lazy here. Well, maybe I won't. 2 times x plus 1. I should have been lazy now. This looks better. It's plus 2. Okay, so multiply that all the way through. And what we get is this. 5 times 2 times x plus 2. Oh, I'm going to run out of space so hard right now. Sorry, guys. 5 times 2 times x plus 2 
and the idea is you want to cross, you want to kind of cancel out the denominators of the original with what you're multiplying by. So the x plus ones will cancel. We're going to keep it like that. Okay. So with the six, the two and the x plus two will cancel out. So we're end up we are left with sorry six times x plus one. And on the right side, the x plus two and the x plus ones will cancel, and we'll be left with x plus seven times two. Okay, simple enough. Let's multiply this out. We're going to get 10x plus 20 plus 6x plus 6 is equal to 2x plus 14. Okay, simplify and combine like terms. We get 14x is equal to negative 12, and we end up with 6 is equal to negative 6, sorry, x is equal to negative 6 sevenths. Okay, and there you go. There's rational equations. Um, the key to finding that LCD, canceling out those denominators. Let's do another example. So this one's a little bit more straightforward. 3p minus 1 over 3, uh, that's going to be minus 2p over p minus 1 equals p. So my LCD in this case, I need 3 and I need p minus 1. Technically there's a 1 in there also, but you know, you can kind of ignore that. Now let's multiply the whole thing by that LCD. Okay, and multiply for it. Um, so in that first one, the threes will cancel, and we'll get 3p minus 1 times p minus 1. Next one, the p minus 1 will cancel, and we'll get negative 2p times 3 is equal to, and that p is going to get multiplied by everything we're going to do. 3p times p minus 1. Okay, so on the left side we get 3p squared. Looks like minus 4p. That'll be plus 1 minus 6p. And that's equal to 3p squared minus 3p. I picked a bad letter. P is P's weird to say. Simplify like terms. Move numbers to the left, variables to the right. I get 1 is equal to 7p. So p is equal to 1. Seven. Get the picture? Let's try another one. Okay. LCD here. If I look at all my denominators, all I see and all I need to include here is x minus 4. So multiply the whole thing by x minus 4. Okay, if I do that, the x minus 4s will cancel on both the left and right sides, and I'll get x is equal to 4. Uh, plus 2 times x minus 4. So we get x is equal to 4 plus 2x minus 8. So what we get here is negative x equals negative 4. We get x is equal to 4. Um, now, here's one thing we have to take into account. What were your original restrictions on the whole equation? Take a look. This whole equation can't exist where the denominator is equal to zero, and that happens at x equals four. So this actually doesn't work. If I plug it in, I'll get no solution. So our answer is going to be no solution. Okay. And then maybe another one here, and we'll end with this. And the video will be over. Q over 5 plus Q plus 2 over Q equals Q plus 5 over 3. Okay, so um, our LCD here, I need a 3, I need a 5, I need a Q. So my LCD is going to be 15Q. So let's multiply the whole thing by 15Q. Uh, if I do that, let's see, um, we're going to get um, Q times 3Q, 15 divided by that 5 will get us 3 there, so three times, Q times 3Q, sorry I blanked it for a second, 
Um, the Q's here will cancel, so we'll have 15 times Q plus 2. I'm picking some terrible variables. Q is also annoying to write. Um, and on the right side, the 3 will cancel with the 15, and we'll get uh, 5Q times Q plus 5. Okay, so if I simplify this, we're going to get 3Q squared plus 15Q plus 30 equals 5Q squared uh, plus 25Q. Okay, bring it all to one side. We have some quadratics here. It looks like we're going to have to do some factors. So we're going to do 0, and we'll get equals 2Q squared plus 10Q. That's going to be minus 30. Okay, so this is the same thing. If I divide through by 2, this is the same thing as just factoring Q squared plus 5Q minus 15. Okay, I'm going to have to do some quadratic formula. So Q is equal to negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 4 times negative 15. Um, all over 2 times uno. Okay, and that's going to be equal to negative 5 plus or minus root 85 over 2. And there you go. Two answers. Okay, and that's all of section 2.5. It is 5.45 here on Monday. I think I'm the only teacher left in this building. It's starting to get dark out. I got here in the dark. Man, this is a little depressed. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you watch this. I'm going to post it to Blackboard, which I don't know why I'm saying that on this video because you won't see it unless it's on Blackboard. Uh, but take a look at the material. Make sure you understand it. Do the assignment for 2.5. Come in Wednesday, Saxon time, asking questions after school, before school. Um, I've been talking for about 45 minutes. I'm going to end the video now. Okay, hope you all enjoyed your election day, and I'll see you on Thursday. Remember, there's a quiz. Bye-bye.